Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Uh, my name is Osama and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a really cool timeline of the past 10 years of and the fall and rise of the nuclear industry. This is gonna be a really interesting video because it marks almost the 10th year anniversary of me being in the nuclear world, right? So I graduated high school in the year 2014 and now it's the year 2024 and so, Things have really been up and down and um, I'm gonna be sharing my own personal experience, what my perceptions were of the industry, how I perceived the industry when I was studying in undergrad and ultimately what happened now. Right now is a really unique moment in history, which is the unprecedented rise of the nuclear industry. The nuclear industry across the world is really at a turning point. We're seeing huge amounts of construction projects, interest in small modular reactors, um, and a need for energy that everyone is looking at nuclear energy as a hero. All right, so this wasn't really the trend even the past two or three years, right? This is a really recent rise that has come uh, in the industry because of a few different factors that I'll discuss. But uh, yeah, let's deep dive right into it. All right, so in the year 2014, things were a bit tricky, right? Um, the industry here in Canada wasn't really falling, similar to other countries like Japan or Germany or other countries in Europe, there was policy that was driving nuclear phase out. Japan had shut down all of its nuclear power reactors um, at that time. In 2011, the Fukushima Daiichi disaster really led countries to take a different look at nuclear power. Some countries like Canada chose to really stick to nuclear. We weren't building any new nuclear power plants, but we weren't necessarily phasing them out. We were continuing to refurbish our assets and, and maintain them. The United States, on the other hand, similar situation. To be honest, they were shutting down some of their nuclear power plants early. It varies, it varies country by country, but overall, a lot of the assets were being maintained. However, countries like Germany or Japan were taking some drastic steps to either shut down nuclear power reactors or permanently decommission them, also known as phase outs. You, you have a very unique circumstance. This really required a lot of research. So when I was researching the nuclear power industry, I knew that was the case. I knew that this, this, this industry wasn't necessarily booming. And, and I think when you're evaluating whether what, what career path you wanna go on, that's something that you have to look at as well. Like for example, a lot of, a lot of uh, young professionals choose to go into industries that are really blowing up like tech. There's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to not only tech or automotive or any other industry. Um, global circumstances and situations really drive, really drive these industries. Same, same goes for nuclear. So the reason why it was very stagnant and kind of at a decline, to be honest, in certain parts of the world was because of a large scale disaster like Fukushima. Um, in the past, uh, nuclear industry has really been here because of because of an oil crisis right so there was an oil crisis in the 1970s in the 1960s which really led to the mass building of nuclear power reactors a lot of countries in the world were like okay we cannot depend on fossil fuels right now and we have a huge need for electricity demand in our countries and so let's start building nuclear power reactors like crazy so you see countries like canada france just like huge building of nuclear power reactors. Uh, most of the nuclear power plants that are operating right now across the world, there's around 440 or so. Most of those nuclear power plants were built in the 1970s. Okay, 1970s to 1980s. And it's kind of mind boggling, right? Like these assets are producing almost 10% of the world's global supply of electricity, right? They're just cranking out electricity they're being refurbished, so their lives are being extended. And, and so there's a lot of jobs being created in not only the construction, uh, but also supply of nuclear fuel, supply of components. So there's valve manufacturers that are making equipment for, for these reactors. There's uh, isotopes being produced inside these nuclear power reactors used for cancer treatment, for sterilization of equipment. Then you've got uh, then you've got different isotopes that are being produced for, then you've got training that's taking place for operators, uh, there's operation staff running these reactors, and the people uh, that are, are supplying specialized, specialized expertise, right, to run these power reactors. There's research ongoing, R&D. So these power plants are literally machines for jobs, right? Like you've got skilled trades. It's mind boggling how much, how much value these plants provide for 
the world. And then that kind of slowed down in the 1980s and 1990s because of Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. So these are, like I said, black swan events that took place that affected public perception, okay? Uh, the public started perceiving nuclear as dangerous. And that's obviously not true because nuclear power and nuclear technologies are actually one of the safest technologies in the world. And that's kind of what I talk about in this YouTube channel. Yeah, you see, you see, you know, how global circumstances really impact the trajectory of the industry. The two things that have kind of overlapped in, in the past two or three years that have caused an upspike in the industry is number one is the climate change issue. Climate change is an unprecedented challenge that countries across the world are facing. And so with this unprecedented challenge, a lot of countries are looking at nuclear energy because it is zero carbon emissions while operating. Uh, so it's a very low carbon, like low carbon energy resource. It produces a lot small amounts of waste product, which can be uh, disposed of safely as well. There's safety cases around that. And so overall, um, it, it just makes sense to, to start building these this infrastructure and this technology. Number two, there's economic interests. When you build a nuclear power reactor, it's very expensive. And it's very expensive at the start. But when countries get used to building nuclear power reactors, the cost significantly drops. So you see countries like Korea or China or even Russia that are building nuclear power reactors for a very small cost as compared to Western nations who haven't really done it for the past 30 years. Uh, and so you see that um, with, throughout the years, there is a decrease in the price of nuclear power reactor builds. Of course, if you do something for long enough, you get better at doing it, okay? And so countries realize that although nuclear power is initially expensive, it can get cheaper over time. And also when it comes to the cost of a nuclear power reactor, there is significant benefit to the economy, right? These power reactors, they produce electricity for very cheap over time, right? So although there's that initial cost right at the front, over the life cycle of that nuclear power reactor, it's producing a lot of money for the economy, for taxpayers, everyone benefits, okay? And so overall, there's economic benefits. And number three is a global crisis. So because of the Ukraine-Russia war, there was a significant impact on natural gas supply for Europe and different parts of the world. Because of this, a lot of, a lot of countries were dependent on natural gas as a low carbon resource to, to pr produce electricity. And this is a bit of a challenge because we are at a crossroads. We are at a time where countries across the world require more electricity. The grids in countries across the world are exponentially increasing because of electric cars, because of electrification of industries, and because of a lot of net zero initiatives. And so you have all of these factors one upon one layering and the only feasible and really good option to for countries to pursue is nuclear. So that's why it's back on the table, right? It just makes sense, it's practical. So those are basically the circumstances which have led to the rise of the nuclear industry, all right? And so in that 10 year time, 2014, where things were, okay, is this industry rising or falling? It's kind of stagnant here in Canada, all the way to, okay, now there is unprecedented growth, right? There's refurbishments going on. There's there's basically new builds that are being constructed. And I, and I think for those that haven't really considered nuclear in the past, this is a great option because a lot of other industries like tech have have been impacted, right? They're kind of slowly decreasing. And there is a lot of unemployment here in Canada and other parts of the world. So yeah, I would say that really consider nuclear energy as a potential career path. These are great paying jobs. They paid really well. You also have really good health benefits. And number three was that the retirement packages were great, like great because, and the retirement benefits were even better, right? So in terms of retirement, here in Canada, a lot of uh, a lot of companies in the Canadian nuclear industry offer defined benefit pension plans. You you basically obviously contribute right from your monthly paycheck, but at the end, uh, you're secured a pretty good um, salary while you're retired, right? So overall, those were kind of some of the advantages that I saw in terms of 
nuclear facilities. Great old jobs where they'll keep you for life, they'll value you as an employee, and uh, you can also come back as a consultant if you want to progress in your career. There is a short timeline of my experiences in the industry and seeing the rise and fall of the industry. I think public perception is also one factor that is really improving across the world. Um, the younger generations, when I talk to them, they see nuclear power from a very um, agnostic perspective. They see it from a very from a perspective of, hey, we need all solutions on the table because climate change is not easy, right? It's not going to be an easy issue to tackle. With this new mindset, with this with this new um, vision that the the youth have. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of change that can be made in society. And so there you have it. That's my experience. That's my story. And hope you enjoyed. Hope you get a chance to check out some of my other videos on this channel. Until then, take care.